All right, folks, here we go. We're going to be talking about the different types of reactions. We will start with a double displacement reaction in which we have um, typically takes place in an aqueous solutions, two aqueous solutions combined. And what can happen from there is you can get a precipitate where just down here, precipitate, that would be a solid. that forms from some of the ions that were originally in the first two solutions. So we have aqueous solutions combining, ions of them will exchange places. Uh, we're not going to need an activity series, but a precipitate can be um, determined. We're going to use the solubility guidelines that are on your green sheet. There's six guidelines to look at, and I'll go through some of those with you as we're doing the practice problems. All right, looking at the next page or the next slide would be some examples. I want to draw a picture real quick of what we're talking about here with this first one. Um, when we're talking about adding these solutions together, if we look inside them, we're talking about aqueous, so that'd be sodium ions and carbonate ions. And we're adding that to another group of ions, aluminum, so they're in water and chloride ions. So when we mix them all together, let's assume that this is this barrier is gone and we're mix, letting them all mix together. Now it's a matter of these ions either staying apart from each other, these positive and negatives, or possibly attracting so well that they form a solid. And what happens here in this case is the aluminum and the carbonate attract so well they form a solid and that solid is called a precipitate. So let's just look at what, how we determine that and how we would write a balanced chemical equation um, from that with these two reactants given. So here we have these reactants. If we know that uh, um, it is sodium carbonate and aluminum chloride, what's going to happen is the positives will switch places. So the sodium chloride is one possible product and then the other possible product is aluminum carbonate. It is possible that there would be no reaction in this case, um, but we'll talk about that later. Aluminum carbonate, aluminum is a plus three, carbonate is a minus two, so Al2 and then the CO3, three. Then the question is if it's aqueous or solid, what you would put behind it, or if they're both aqueous, it's possible. As I look at the solubility guidelines, sodium chloride, um, I look at number one for solubility guidelines says sodium, potassium, and ammonium compounds are soluble. That means that they're always soluble in water no matter what. So that means that the sodium chloride is aqueous. Soluble means it dissolves in water and is aqueous. As far as the aluminum carbonate goes, if I look at rule number or guideline number five, it says most carbonates are insoluble. It says phosphates and silicates too, except sodium, potassium, and ammonium. So that means that this is an insoluble product. So I'm going to put an S in parentheses behind that. So that would be considered our precipitate. I mix these two liquids together. I see a solid being formed. That's called a precipitate. When I try to balance this, if I want to do that, I have a two aluminums. I'm going to put, the, let me think about this here. Actually, I'm going to do this one first because I have three carbonates. That leaves the six sodiums there. I need two more or two times three to get the chlorides gives me two aluminum, so everything's balanced. The next one is one that I want to do in class as a demo, um, but you're not going to be able to see it. This is a white liquid or a clear liquid with a little bit of a yellow tint, and this is a clear liquid. When I mix them together, I get a dark yellow solid that gets formed. When we figure out the products here, one of them would be potassium, now with the nitrate, because they're going to switch spots, Positives will still will go with negatives, and the other positive will go with negative. The other possible product here is lead iodide. Lead, because it's lead 2 here, with the I, PBI2. So the question is, what's our precipitate? What's that big yellow solid that gets formed um, when I mix those two together? Well, potassium nitrate, if I look at the first or the second root guideline, Potassium compounds are always soluble, and number two says nitrates are always soluble. So that's definitely not it. Potassium nitrate is going to be aqueous. So what's my solid or my precipitate? Well, lead to iodide 
doesn't apply to anything on no solubility guidelines, but since we saw a precipitate for sure, that's my solid. So by default, that has to be the solid. And you'll see one like that on the uh, lab that you'll do on Friday with kind of the same thing where you get a solid, but it's not really showing up on your guidelines. So that must be it. All right, moving on to the next type. Oh, actually, we'll do one more type of double displacement. Double displacement reactions could also be a neutralization reaction. It's not always just going to be a uh, precipitate precipitation reaction. It can be a neutralization, which you talked about in ninth grade science, where an acid is added to a base. What happens is um, you have a hydrogen and OH from these two, so HOH or water is always, always, always going to be produced because hydroxide is always part of a base, hydrogen is always part of, a, of an acid. The other thing that is produced is called a salt. In this case, it's sodium chloride that you're used to as a salt. But let's just say that instead of uh, sodium hydroxide, we barium hydroxide and HCl. You're still going to get H2O, which is the water. In this case, the salt is barium chloride. So pretty much any ionic substance can be a salt. The official definition of a salt is what is produced in a neutralization reaction along with water. So just because um, table salt is NaCl doesn't mean that that's the only salt there is out there. The other next type of reaction is a synthesis reaction. This is where we have two um, elements for our purposes getting together to make one product. Um, we're going to still crisscross that product, Ca plus O2 is CaO. Ca is a 2 plus, oxygen is a 2 minus. Very similar to the um, reaction we did with magnesium and oxygen. Same idea. Uh, we don't know the physical states in this case. Uh, we're going to watch a video in class called uh, TED Ed, a TED Ed video about the Haber process. And that Haber process is going to go into detail about how we make ammonia. Haber process how we make ammonia and how that's so important in our process of making food throughout the, throughout the world. So if you want to look up that video, you got some time, great video about why this synthesis reaction is so darn important. So this is an example where we have uh, two nonmetals making a molecule. Uh, it is not, and that is ammonia. So it's not a metal and nonmetal. So it's possible to have two nonmetals, but in most cases metal and nonmetal for the synthesis reactions we'll be doing. All right, next we have a decomposition reaction. You're again going to need your green rule sheet that we looked at for the single displacement reactions. Uh, and typically, we're going to have two, or uh, we're going to have a single compound always that's breaking down. This is a little bit misleading because it doesn't just break apart into its ions or into its elements all the time, but we'll look at that. You did this in ninth grade when you took water and you did electrolysis and you made it into hydrogen and oxygen. That was through electricity. You broke down a compound. Many times it's with electricity or heat that we're breaking things down through decomposition. We're going to make some simpler processes or simpler substances, but it's not just going to be the ions or not just always the uh, elements. You need to look at the rule sheet to figure out what it is. So a common issue with um, decomposition is students will want to just say it breaks into ions. So I'll get this a lot on a test or a quiz. We'll just say it's going to break into potassium and chlorate. That's what the potassium chlorate is going to break into. That is wrong. We need to look at our rule sheet. Potassium chlorate, we look at our decomposition reactions. Number two says metal chlorates decompose into metal chlorides and oxygen when heated. So this is potassium chlorate. It's going to break apart in the same metal, potassium chloride, Potassium is a plus one, chloride is a minus one, and oxygen when heated. So those are the products. We're going to do a demo in class with this, which it, which, it, which is one of my favorite demos. It'll be in the hood. I will take potassium chloride, heat it up. It will bubble, pre create a huge oxygen-rich environment, and I'll drop in a Sour Patch Kid or a jelly bean, and it will burn very, very brightly and look like some fireworks kind of and it'll have a purple color when it does that. The purple color is coming from the potassium here that's burning when it all burns up, but it's a pretty cool demo that we'll be doing in the hood for a decomposition reaction. So um, 
Lots of examples of decomposition reactions out there. You're going to need to be able to use your rule sheet to determine, okay, what's my reactant? And then from that reactant, deciding what it's going to break down into. So I'm not going to give you any more examples of those right now. You can practice those um, later. One more quick example of a decomposition reaction is TNT, also known as trinitrotoluene. It is not the same thing as dynamite, but it is similar in that you can ignite it and it explodes. So here is trinitrotoluene, a big molecule. I don't have it in the structural formula or anything, but you'll notice that this is a solid. I have two moles, that's what that two stands for. And then I make a whole bunch of gas. This is a gas, this is a gas, this is a gas. In this case, this would be a solid. But I make seven plus five, 12 plus three, 15 moles of gas when I started with a solid. So the reason that this is so explosive and why anything's explosive is you make gas in a confined area, it needs to take up space and it goes boom. Um, moving on to the last type, whoops. And that's a combustion reaction. I have brought this up before. Um, combustion reactions are with carbon compounds and they will, when you release they react with oxygen, and they're going to release light and heat pretty much all the time. All the fires that you typically see um, are going to be carbon compound reacting with oxygen. Products are always, 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 always carbon dioxide and water. So the tough thing is, is to identify this type of reaction, and that's what students have struggled with the most in the past. So as an example here, we have... Um, meth or octane right here octane that's our common molecule that's in gasoline and we're adding that to oxygen just exactly what you're doing your car is doing and you're getting carbon dioxide plus water as the products every single time those are the same products probably students the most difficult thing about this uh, about combustion reactions, it's identifying it as a combustion. People will look at it and think it's a single displacement because we have an element and we have a compound. So you're looking for carbon compound and oxygen that makes it combustion. Always, always, always getting the same products in that case. So there are the types of reactions um, that you miss by not being in class for this. We talked about, I showed some different demos and such. Um, but essentially, this is the information that we are using and practicing with. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, let me know. Thank you.